come out of is money that can only be spent on our tourism and stuff. Is that correct? That's we correct. We can't spend it on anything else. Anything else because the way it's set up. So that is correct. You want to withdraw that? Yeah, you can help yeah. yeah, I would like to add, Miss Landers does a tremendous job. She is a machine. I tell her that all the time. She uh, is always working over and beyond to find things for the county to improve the county. So if she thinks it's a good thing to win a $25,000 grant, I think it's um, good to be. She hasn't done anything that's made me question any of her tourism skills yet so geo tracking is very smart we do that sometimes in real estate to try to figure out who we need to reach so correct that's a very good yeah, mr Hooper, what's the what's the most of it on the floor we have the motion withdrawn to table for next month mr coleman i believe you had a motion yes to, to, approve. to approve mr coleman got a motion to approve second Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Jerry Cooper. Yes. Mr. Rick Cooper. Yes. Mr. Hunt. Yes. Mr. Hurt. Yes. Ms. McClanahan. Yes. Mr. Malone. Yes. Mr. Mayberry. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. Tidwell. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Yes. All aye. Motion passes. The next resolution is airport maintenance grant, fifteen thousand dollars. This one's a little easier. All we contribute is five percent, so this costs us seven hundred and fifty dollars, and we get fifteen thousand dollars to use for airport maintenance. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion? Motion. Entertain a motion. A motion. Motion. Motion been made and properly seconded to accept this grant for a seven hundred fifty dollar match. The roll call, please. Mr. Coleman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Jerry Hooper. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Ricky Hooper. Yes. Mr. Hunt. Yes. Mr. Hurt. Yes. Mr. McClanahan. Yes. Mr. Maloney. Yes. Mr. Mayberry? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Tidwell? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. All eyes. <coughs> Motion passes. Next item is E, Emergency 911 Board Appointment. Uh, recommendation of the County Executive that Mr. Jesse Wallace of New Johnsonville, Tennessee is elected the Director of the Board of Emergency Communications District of Memphis County. Complete an ex unexpired term of Mrs. Carolyn Ingram, which began on June 30th, 2019 and ends June 30th, 2023. Motion to make a motion. Second. Motion made and seconded to elect Mr. Wallace. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All opposed. Next item is Public Assistant Grant Award, $6,122,446. So this is, um, this is largely, and in the largest part, repair of roads and so forth. This is the resolution that we made to do the $6 million loan. This basically is a grant that's going to repay us the funds that we're spending doing this work um, up until this date. Now this, uh, we've actually looked at this several different times, but this is the first time that I've been asked to put my signature on something that's going to cost the county 300 and some odd thousand dollars, which is all our small percentage of, of getting this six million dollar plus grant. In your packets you have just the breakdown on the numbers 
And in your email, you were emailed the, this in its entirety, and it's you know 70 pages of the typical um, federal rules and regulations that we're going to be required to to follow. Has everybody had an opportunity to look at this grant, and are you familiar with it? And do you have any questions about what it's for and what it's about? Mr. Woods, do you have anything that you would like to add on, on your behalf about this particular? And I'm not expecting you to. I'm just offering you that opportunity. Okay. Okay. So this money is going to the bridges on over or not? Mostly. There was some funds used for cleanup and so forth, but the, the, the large majority of this is roads and bridges. And then again, this is going back to the, the loan that we took out to cover these expenses. This grant is to reimburse us for the funds that we are spending as we go. Mr. Graven? Yes. Do we have any other choice? I would hate to, I would hate to contemplate it. And, that, and that's the, just the cold hard truth. Uh, we, without this grant, y'all, we would be in a, in a world of hurt. And, mm -hmm. and not to take it lightly, there's no such thing as free money. And there are rules and stipulations. You know, one of them, just as an example, I need to verify that we have no smoking signs on all of our public buildings because that's one of the federal rules and regulations that we're required to follow. So it's, it's not... It's not that this is free, and it's not that there's not going to be strings attached to it, but we just don't have much of a choice that I can see. I agree. We need a motion. We, uh, we do need a motion. Motion, Mr. Chairman, to accept Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion made and properly seconded that we accept the grant from $6,122,000. $446. Looking for our part. That's the state. Okay, 322,000 is our part. Roll call, please. Mr. Coleman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Jerry Hooper. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Ricky Hooper. Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. McClanahan? Yes. Ms. Uh, Mr. Malone? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mayberry? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. Tibble? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Pass on. The next item is bid acceptance, Humphreys County Bridge replacement projects. Would you have anything? Mr. Williams, Jake. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. On uh, August 18th, um, we <coughs> Uh, accepted bids on our first two bridge replacement projects for flood damage county road bridges. These were bridges that we had received obligations from, uh, from FEMA for funding assistance, which uh, obligates the county only at a 5% funding level. Uh, the two bridges that were bid on that date were Trace Creek Road over Trace Creek out in the Gorman area and Brown Mill Road uh, over Big Richland Creek, uh, very close nearby. Uh, our obligations uh, from FEMA, which were based very early on on limited design, were approximately $1 million total for both bridge replacements. Uh, we received bids from two bidders, uh, Dement Construction, who's currently the contractor working on your two State Route 230 bridges for TDOT, and the second contractor was Concrete Structures from Charlotte, Tennessee. 
Uh, demand construction was a low bidder at approximately $1.4 million. Uh, these bids were, obviously that's higher than our FEMA funding obligation, and since receiving the bids and performing a pretty detailed tabulation, which I hope some of you maybe have had an opportunity to look at, I'm happy to answer questions about. We did review these additional costs, which were primarily due to cost escalations that we're seeing at this time. Uh, we reviewed these costs with TEMA, who now is in charge of obligating the money or spending the money for FEMA based on their obligation. And we did receive concurrence uh, as Amanda Height with Humphreys County Emergency uh, Management that assisted us with that communication. And we're sure that additional costs due to these cost escalations would be covered to keep our obligation at the 5% funding level. So we have these bids prepared and the contractor ready to put together final contracts and hope to have a pre-construction meeting as soon as possible, hopefully before the month is out, to then begin construction on the two projects, hopefully in October. So that's what's before you. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer any. Questions? So we will be reimbursed 95%. Yes. Of the 1.4 instead of just the 1 million dollars. Correct. Correct. We we did make the effort to reach out and make sure we had permissions to forgiveness in this case. Basically, we're looking at seventy thousand dollars. Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Motion, we have a motion to accept these bids as presented. <coughs> second. Second. Motion made properly second to accept the bids as presented. Roll call, please. Mr. Coleman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Jerry Hooper. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hooper. Yes. Mr. Hunt. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Yes. Ms. McClanahan. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mayberry. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. Kibble. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Yes. All right. <coughs> Final resolution is the election of notary notaries. Betsy Lewis is a renewal. The other four are new ones. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, new business. I'd like to take one little second and uh, I'd hope the sheriff will be back. Uh, uh, county lost. Uh, Good man this this week, uh, chaplain of our jail for the last several years, uh, Brother Lawrence Golden. I'd like to uh, just uh, express my condolences to the family and, uh, and friends and uh, all the lives he's touched over the years. He was a good man, and I know the sheriff was speaking at his funeral when I when I left this afternoon. I just wanted to bring that up. Is there any new business? Anyone in the audience? Ms. Lane? Yeah, I just wanted to say too that I uh, also have received uh, $9,500 uh, through a TDOT gentrification department, no matching at all. Um, and that will be to help take care of uh, some Tennessee River cleanup. The, uh, our rangers are overseeing that project from September the 14th through October the 1st. They'll use some of those funds for promotional items for the people that come, all the volunteers that will help them do that. A lot of that is still flood debris. They'll be cleaning up along with other things along the river. Um, and then they're going to buy some other kayaks that will help with some of their programming that they're doing there. Those guys, I think we have the best rangers, of course, in the state. Um, and we have been notified um, through ARPA, our ARPA funding, through tourism, 
that the county has been given or allocated $95,000. And I have to go through five webinars, and I will then understand exactly what the money can be spent on, but it is basically to be spent on marketing again. Um, I don't think there's any matching. I don't know that for sure, but I don't believe there is. Um, I send it, we had to do pre-surveys to apply, if you will, for, for those funds. And uh, one of the things I asked for was mapping uh, to start basically over with the maps for Humphreys County. We don't have any decent maps here. We need to start at the very bottom and start over with maps. Um, and because it's tourism, I said we need to be able, we've never done emergency evacuation plans for tourists in the county, where tourists might be. In our four basic big locations. Um, and then we can go down layers and print out maps <coughs> from, the, from the big basic maps. Uh, and I'm gonna have to look for a cartographer, uh, somebody that knows how to do all that, the GIS mapping. Some of the things I found online through the government only go 2019 as far as I can tell and doing a little bit more research. But so that's one of the things. Another thing is um, some augmented reality uh, to teach people where things are in the county. Um, so instead of maybe having so much signage, this is that way or this is that way, we will maybe have, a, for instance, a, um, a Civil War soldier uh, dress and then somebody can take their smartphone and put it up to him and he might say, uh, check out the Johnsonville State Historic Park and this is what you might see there or here's part of the information for the battle. So it'll give them a little bit of the story enough to encourage them to go visit it. Um, or it might say, um, at, at, at the state park, it might say, I bet you're hungry after that. Check out Rochelle's Bar and Barbecue. And uh, just basic things like that to get people to travel around the county without having to see a sign and not even know what that means exactly. So them to hear a little bit of the story. And they liked both of those ideas, the state did. So I'm anxious to get forward. I think the first uh, webinar is next uh, Wednesday, I believe. So we'll see where all that goes, but I just wanted to tell you about that. Uh, those are two couple really great things coming up for us already. So I just wanted to let you know about it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Approach the podium, State your name for the record. Uh, how y'all doing? I'm Scott Bona, uh, Johnsonville native. This is my wife, Melissa. She's passed around. I'll wait till they go around. I've got a quest to remove the road extension from the county road system. system in 2003 but there was a discrepancy and it was there was an extension on it um, that we weren't aware of when we purchased the property the roads are not marked on any state or county maps there was nothing from a legal side of purchasing the property that stated this where we could know what we're dealing with um, <clears throat> so the May-June time frame. Um, 
We uh, now have a road extension from its right at about the six on the Pisgah property. The only place that that road was maintained was from Flatwoods Road right to that 90 degree angle right below the six to the excuse me, to the left of the six of the Pisgah property. Um, it was paved at that point. There's a light pole right there, right on the edge of the property line as well. Um, so basically we purchased the property with no way of knowing that this was an extension. Um, it was supposedly 2003. It was not maintained from that point. I know prior, I won't get that now, it's a guess, I won't say for sure five years prior to us buying it. And I'm pretty sure more like 10 years, because we used to hunt back there. Um, so it was grown up, when we bought it, grew up a foiler through it, you know. It was not an accessible road. Uh, it was more like an old logging road for the property. <laughs> Possibly been cleared in the past. Um, so now we have a road extension that runs all the way across our property and onto Mrs. Page property, guesstimation 50, 60 feet. So with that being said, we were going to ask that <coughs> the extension uh, in 2022 be removed from the county road system. Yeah, the deeds uh, all reflect the uh, property lines to where it goes to the Pisgah property where the road was maintained to. So outside of that, there was no documentation when we purchased the property where we knew that this was the county road or anything other than the driveway. So from Flatwoods Road to the corner, I'm, I'm understanding, from Flatwoods Road there has been maintained, correct? To the parks. To the parks. Correct, there. correct okay. sir. And then anything on over here to the Miss Pace's 61.00? That's the extension right through there, correct? That's what's been extended. Um, the, I know the neighbor uh, still has uh, proper, or excuse me, road access off Fender Hill Lane. If you look to the right, right, that they could come across to where they're trying to get to. So we're not trying to landlock anybody. We're just trying to, you know, reclaim our property. Mr. Chairman. Yes. To get this taken out of the system, it'll have to be. It'll have to be petitioned by every property owner connecting from them. Flatwood Road all the way down. Every one of them will have to sign a petition to take this out. <coughs> okay, every property owner. Okay. Um, uh -huh. well, what is the process of extension as far as notifying the adjacent property owners when the road was extended? <laughs> You like to make a comment? <laughs> okay. I don't know uh, if it's in the road. Go ahead, excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, uh, if it's in the road system, which I think uh, Mr. Woods, that's where you need to start and make sure. But I'm wanting to think uh, where you're talking about, uh, Mr. Bonner, is uh, in the road system. Might not have been a t uh, maintained all the way up to that property but the road is i think he had stated and it uh, is in the county road um, list it is in the county road list mm -hmm. um, there are three discrepancies between the county road list what my legal documents say and what the resolution says so we've got multiple issues with it um, you know, with them not notifying us before they went ahead and put a road in, um, you know, I drove up there and there's a county dozer, uh, church road, you know, no notification to us or Miss Pace. Um, I mean, if it's, in, if it's in the county road system, that's Mr. Woods is right. 
it uh, he's the only one that can maintain. Uh, you can't go out there and uh, move up the road. I can't do nothing with the road. He's in charge of every road in the county. I understand, sir, um, but I thought to be accepted in the county road system and had to meet the county road specs, and clearly it did not when we bought it. There were six inches of leaves and it was a swamp, which is why it's been built up about three and a half foot. <coughs> so, you know. Was the road in the already in the county road system before you purchased the property? I believe it was, sir. We had no knowledge. Um, we had no way to know. There was no way for us to know. There's no road sign. Like I said, it's not on the county state maps. Um, Did your deed show any kind of easements? No, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. The Pisgah easement was deeded. Okay. Um, we also have, this went through Fort Williams and Thomason. This is where they did. The title search reflects nothing. It didn't show up anything. It shows Pisgahs, yeah. which is on our deed, but it does not show anything. That's huge. Right. right. We're not we're not debating the Pisgah portion was deeded as an easement. Uh, it's the extension that's what what we've got in question. So, does that road does it go across the half property line, or is it on? Is it doing? A, a dog leg right there at the corner and come over on you or waste draw it on the what you present here like it would go straight through onto her property no sir it goes straight down on us um it could have went on our property um, but it goes straight on us uh, the property line is right here and the road's right here it's that close um as well as it goes across the mrs base as well so it runs right beside her property line uh, it's 100% on us in this space. Mr. Chair, do you know how long the road is? On no, your... I'm not looking at the book. I know we measured it six different times before we determined it. I'm yeah. not sure. Thank you. By what's on the road list? The road list says 0.2 miles. Um, that doesn't match any of the documentation we have, uh, which is 0.2 is 1,056 feet. Um, what we have deeded is 464 and some change uh, from the, that would be at the corner of the Pisgah, the original property that was uh, deeded right away, 464.81. Um, the resolution to when it was accepted in the road system was uh, 0.15, or excuse me, it says 1.5 tenths. Uh, which would equal uh, 792 feet. So there's three discrepancies here. That's why we were just asking that the extension get removed. We can reclaim our property. Um, you know, we've tried to work with the neighbor multiple times. Um, best of my knowledge, I think Pizzi gets told her that she could go across them as well. Uh, we've done everything we can do to try to work with them. And uh, now we're here. So, do you think you could continue to work with her possibly or um we've got crickets nothing but silence mr chairman anyone using this road scott does anyone use it mr chairman this will have to go through the planning commission to even be considered for anything to be taken out the planning commission meets on the fourth Friday, the fourth monday of this month that's where i would start and uh, you can bring your grievance there and, and see what they have to say. Uh, it'll be in the next month. But that's where I would start. And uh, and then you can get an opinion from the rest of the committee. Does the 1,056 feet go away across the hotel property? No, sir. It goes 1,056, probably goes across the Pace property. I'm guessing 50, 60 feet. So, y'all have already got the road built? That two tenths of a mile. So, uh, the 
really nothing we can do here. Uh, Y'all will, uh, what, what day did you say it made on? The fourth, the fourth Monday at 6 o'clock. Fourth Monday at 6 o'clock in the little room behind right here. Bring the grievance there. All right, Bob, thank you for your time. <laughs> Uh, take one minute and uh, thanks for the uh, opportunity to serve and uh, I'll be a little bit more prepared uh, next month. I uh, would like to keep uh, like the discussion tonight. I think we had a good good discussion. I'd like to keep it uh, keep that open and uh, let's try to do. Uh, take turns talking and we'll try to let everybody talk at once and do a little bit do a little bit of good here so I'm, I'm excited to uh, be here I'm excited to have all the new members on the court and excited to have all the uh, old ones on the court too so, so I can say thank you Mr. Chairman Mr. Chairman um, I'm a sound man okay <laughs> And I deal with sound every day. So I really wish that if we could, I, I know I'm green and you know, just as green as can be, but if we really could, if we could use the microphones, there's people out here that would love to hear what all is being said. So other than saying yay or nay or whatever, if we have any discussion, I sure would like to see us use our <laughs> microphones if possible. I would appreciate that. Make a motion to adjourn. Nope. I had one more. Thank God. If I if I could just just for a few minutes, <laughs> indulge me. So this these are this is a work meeting, and it's an opportunity. It's the best opportunity that I feel like I have to just address this body and just talk to y'all, which is what I'd like to do for just a few minutes. And I'll start out by asking if if any of you have you read. The Boys in the Boat. Have you, has anybody read that book? It's a wonderful book. You should take an opportunity to read it. But basically, it's about a team of athletes that competed in the 1936 Olympics in Berlin, in Nazi Germany. Rowboat. Um, they were the underdogs from the very beginning. They were. It was an uphill battle the whole way. But the point is, is they worked together and they figured out the weaknesses and the strengths of each other and they compiled a team that won the World Olympics in Berlin and it's just an amazing story and, and I'm when I think about that I think about us as a commission and the team that we have here we have folks that have different strengths and different weaknesses but we can figure that out and collectively working together we can make a lot of stuff happen by working together. The counties that make things happen, it's the ones that work together to get things done, period. If we're bickering or fighting, and I'm not saying we are, I'm tickled, I'm so tickled with everybody that's on this commission, but I just know that by working together we can accomplish a lot, and that's what I want to do. We went to the, the, all of the, the new folks and myself went to the CTAS orientation and they correctly pointed out the limitations of their job. I mean, I have many limitations that most of you all out there probably are not aware of and the commissioners have their limitations as well. That's not necessarily, you know, a bad thing and, and you know, and that while those limitations are true in their core sense, that does not keep us from working together and being able to accomplish a lot of things. It just means that we have checks and balances in place and that we all need to do our jobs. And again, once again, we can complement each other and, and get a lot done. So we're being tasked for, for looking out for the people of this county. Um, they elected us, all of us, to serve them. And they're asking us to represent them and, and to do the work that needs to be done. They're entrusting that upon us. And it's not something for us to take lightly, and I know that you don't. I 
in my campaign, I, I canvassed this county back and forth from one end to the other, and I talked to an incredible amount of people. And more than talking to the people, I, I listened to what they had to say. And there were several items, I wrote some down, there's, there's six items that were really what I heard resounding over and over and over again in this county. And I'd, like, I'd just like to share those with you. Um, these are not necessarily in order, but w one of the main things that the people I talk to in the county is that they want a cleaner, more presentable county. I'm not going to say tonight how we accomplish that. What I'm encouraging us to do, all of us, is to just think about these items and in the days and weeks and months and years to come, let's figure out how we can give these people what they actually want from us. They want a cleaner and more presentable county. I would like to point out to some of these items that I'm talking about, look, I've said this, we're not throwing anybody under the bus whatsoever. I'm just repeating what people have said to me. They don't know, I don't know, we don't know what some of the handicaps are, or what the issues that we're facing to be able to work on these things. So the, the next thing is they want better roads. I heard that over and over and over again. It's kind of an unfair thing because, you know, the flood that we had a year ago was devastating to so many of our county roads. So I'm not singling anybody out here. What I would say is what can we do collectively to figure out how we can help Mr. Woods and how we can help our road crews give the citizens of our county what they want. Whatever those holdups are, let's communicate, let's figure it out and work it out. They want strategic growth. They want business, they want industry, jobs, and recreation. Not everybody, now don't get me wrong, a lot of people have their own ideas. This is not this is not one shoe fits all, but I'm saying I heard this over and over and over again, and it didn't matter if I was east in McEwen or out at Husburg. The people, this is important to them, and they're looking for us to figure out how to make that happen. They want good schools. Again, a lot of these things are, are emotional and people are passionate right now because of the damage and, and the suffering that everyone's gone through. You know, it brings things to a cusp and, and, and I get that. And so maybe they're talking about this more than they should be, but and nothing against what everybody and anybody's doing, none whatsoever, but that's important to the people in our county. This one might surprise you. There's a whole lot of folks that think we need something for kids to do. I heard it over and over and over again. They want something for their kids to do. Healthy, fun things for kids to do. It's what they want. We should think about it. And last, and, and certainly not least, what can we do about the flooding? Once again, you know, people are passionate and emotional about that, and a lot of folks have their own ideas on what to do about it. I'm saying it's important to the people in this county, and uh, we should keep it in our thoughts and, and see what we can do. In my campaign, I, I've, I promised two things in my entire campaign. One, I committed to doing a town hall meeting, at least semi-annually, to just let the public sit down and ask me whatever questions they want to ask me, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. The second thing was I promised turkey at Thanksgiving and ham at Christmas for the Senior Center, just in McEwen, but I might could be talked into working with the other ones as well. But those, those were the, the two promises I made. Other than that, I told everyone that I'll, I'll work hard, and I'll do the best that I can do. And I know that you all will too. 
And I'm going to end this with a little something that just seems so appropriate. And this is Romans chapter 8, number 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Y'all wouldn't be here if you didn't feel that way, and I know that. And that's what we're going to do. I appreciate your time, Mr. Chairman and the body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.